Good evening, everyone. I'm Commissioner Darnell Grisby of the Transportation Commission. I'm pleased to be here in Vallejo to, to convene this hearing to receive public comment on an application our commission received to authorize tolling on State Route 37. First, I'd like to go over the language of accommodations during this meeting for those participating via Zoom, as shown on the slide. I'll provide this information in English, then I'll ask our Spanish and the Galilog interpreters to repeat it. We'll need everyone on Zoom to select the language, even those participating in English. The instructions are as follows. First, click on the interpretation button in your Zoom screen. This button is typically at the bottom of your screen. The location will depend on the device you are using. A reminder for those that will participate in English, please make sure you select English as well as that you can hear anything that the interpreter is interpreting from Spanish and Tagalog. Two, select your language. I'll ask the Spanish interpreter to repeat these instructions now. ¿Qué tal? Muy buenas tardes. Les habla su intérprete en español. Ahora, para las personas interesadas en accesar el canal de interpretación en español, por favor, vaya a la parte baja de su pantalla en su computadora o móvil y encuentre la barra de herramientas que se ve de esta forma que la puede ver en pantalla. Aquí puede encontrar el globo terráqueo, el mundo. Haga clic en este canal y escoja su canal. En nuestro caso sería en español. Se le pide también que por favor mantenga su micrófono apagado hasta que el coordinador o la coordinadora le diga que es su turno de hablar. I'll now ask the Tagalog interpreter to repeat these instructions. Para, para makapagsalin, makarinig kayo na salin, pakiclick yung buton sa ilalim ng screen, merong uh, pwedeng pagpilian dyan. Uh, paalala, pakiclick ang piniling wika uh, sa at yun ang Tagalog. So, pumili ng wika at pindutin ang buton. Give us a moment to enable the audio interpretation features so that you can access it. And give us a moment to start recording in these languages. You may hear a short break in the audio as we activate the recording. Finally, note that if you are calling via phone, the interpretation feature is not available in Zoom for phone-only participants. Please log in to Zoom to access the interpretation if you can. Live closed captioning also is available for Zoom participants. Please select the Show Captions tab at the bottom of your screen. There are a number of language options available there to choose from. That concludes the language combination and closed captioning instructions. All right, welcome again to everyone. I'd like to start by thanking all of you for attending today, those both here in person and those via Zoom. Your attendance and participation today is very helpful and important to us. I understand we have the Lake Mayor, Robin McConnell, in attendance, whom I'd like to acknowledge and thank him for being here. And some of you are attending today may not be familiar with our commission. I wanted to provide some brief background for you. We are a state agency with 11 commissioners, nine of whom are appointed by the governor and two by the legislature. In addition to myself, we also have four commissioners. We have four commissioners, Jay Bradshaw here, along with more commissioners participating virtually, commissioners Norton, Lou, and Martinez. And we have our interim executive director, Tanisha Taylor, also is with us today as well as Chair Leanne Eager. The main responsibility of our commission is to allocate state and federal funding to transportation projects throughout the state of California. We also have a few other responsibilities, one of which is to approve applications for local agencies or trams to toll on state highways. And that brings us to the purpose of today's hearing, which is an informal informational, informational, informational hearing to receive public comment on an application our commission has received to toll state route 37. Your input on this application is vitally important to us as the commission considers this tolling application. We will provide the instructions on how to comment once we get to the comment period in agenda item number four. 
Now we move to agenda item number two, which will be an overview of the commission's toll facility approval process for our interim executive director, Tanisha Taylor. Thank you, Commissioner Grisby, and thank you all. Thank you to all today for attending this hearing. Before we hear about the proposed project and receive public comment, we want to first make everyone aware of the process for approving toll facilities. In 2015, the legislature passed a law, Assembly Bill 194, which assigned the commission the responsibility to approve toll facilities in California. This law contains several minimum criteria for the commission to consider for a toll facility application. For example, the product must demonstrate that it will improve corridor performance, such as by increasing the number of people able to pass through the corridor or by reducing travel delays. In addition, the commission approved program guidelines in March 2016 that request applicants to provide supplemental information, such as the project's impact on nearby transportation routes and impacts on air quality. A complete list of the application requirements in the law and the commission's guidelines are available on the commission's website or by contacting the commission directly. The law also requires the commission, prior to approving an application, conduct at least one public hearing at or near the proposed toll facility for the purpose of receiving public comments. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to this provision of the law. On March 27th, the commission received an application from the Bay Area Infrastructure Financing Authority to authorize tolling on a portion of State Route 37 from just west of State Route 121 to the Mayor Island Interchange. The hearing we are holding today on this application is informational only to listen and receive public comments. I want to emphasize this. There will be no actions taken today by the Commission. We are here to listen and learn about the application and to hear from the public. Commission staff currently are reviewing the application and will be taking into consideration all of the public comment that we received from today's hearing, as well as any additional written comments we receive after today's hearing and before. Commission staff will then make a recommendation to the commission whether to approve the application at the next commission meeting, which will be held on May 17th and 18th in San Francisco. Again, that's May 17th and 18th in San Francisco. In closing, I would like to reiterate that today's hearing is informational only for the purpose of receiving public comment. And again, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Tanisha. Uh, next up, we will hear from Andrew Framer, Executive Director of Bay Area Infrastructure Finance Authority. Thank you, Chair Grisby. Andrew Framer, uh, Deputy Executive Director of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and Bay Area Infrastructure Finance Authority. And I think we have an opening five minute video that's really designed to put context on the projects that we'll be talking about. Highway 37 is a critical piece of the Bay Area mobility puzzle. The 21-mile corridor connects Solano County cities and some of the most affordable housing of the Bay Area with jobs in Marin and Sonoma counties. Yet the route is challenged by the issues of congestion, flooding, Sears Point to Mare Island, routinely adding 30 minutes to morning commute times and 80 minutes to the evening commute. Sometimes it's even worse. Storms and king tides have shut down the Marin County side of the highway for days at a time. There is no easy alternative to Highway 37. Drivers forced to detour north or south would have to travel twice as far to get from Vallejo to Dubato or vice versa. A commitment to equity requires a reliable link between the comparatively affordable housing in cities like Vallejo, Fairfield, and American Canyon, and the job markets to the west. 
and congestion relief is necessary to make Highway 37 a viable route for new bus service. That's why these state and regional agencies formed a partnership to develop and build both near-term and long-term solutions for Highway 37. Working with transportation authorities in Solano, Napa, Sonoma, and Marin counties, the partners have several key goals. Resilience, near-term, and long-term adaptation to reduce risk from flooding and sea level rise, plus early enhancements for sensitive bay lands. Equity, reduce delays caused by congestion, and add bus transit. 40% of all Highway 37 trips are taken by folks who live in lower income households. Access, increase bike, pedestrian, and recreational access across the North Bay. Restoration, integrate restoration of the historic North Bay Bainlands in the redesign of Highway 37. Rising sea levels will require a permanent long-term solution that's higher, wider, safer, greener, and built to last. Caltrans this winter identified an elevated four-lane causeway along the existing Highway 37 alignment with a bicycle and pedestrian path and accommodations for an eventual extension of smart rail service as the preferred solution for improving mobility, adapting to rising waters, and restoring the health of the San Pablo Baylands. It is expected to take at least 10 to 20 years and billions of dollars that are not yet available to make this vision a reality. The team proposes to reduce congestion in the bottleneck between Sears Point and Mare Island by using the existing shoulders to add another lane in each direction. Challenges include minimizing impacts on sensitive wetlands and the use of any bay fill. But this 10 mile improvement project could open to traffic in five years or less accelerating Highway 37's permanent transformation, allowing faster and more reliable travel throughout the Highway 37 corridor. Carpool lanes to prioritize high occupancy vehicles during peak commute times. The introduction of bus service between Vallejo and both Novato and San Rafael. Improved public access to the Bay Trail, the Vine Trail and Vallejo waterfront sites. A critical head start on improving hydraulic flows and restoring key marshland habitats. Specific improvements include replacing the Tule Creek Bridge near Sears Point with a much longer bridge that will promote baylands restoration by allowing more water to flow into and out of the creek channel. Plus enhancements to stop deterioration of what's known as Strip Marsh East near Mare Island which provides habitat for the endangered salt marsh harvest mouse and other species. The other big issue, of course, is money. For both the near-term Sears Point to Mare Island improvements and the series of long-term resilience projects to completely transform the entire Highway 37 corridor, tolls are a practical solution that can not only help speed project completion, but also serve as a match to secure other regional, state, and federal dollars. By encouraging carpooling and transit use, tolling can also help manage traffic congestion and reduce overall vehicle miles traveled. In 2023, the Bay Area Infrastructure Financing Authority, an MTC affiliate, applied to the California Transportation Commission for authorization to operate a toll facility on the critical stretch of Highway 37 between Sears Point and Mare Island. The proposal includes toll-free carpool lanes and tolled general purpose lanes with tolls collected electronically. Toll collection would not begin until these new lanes open for traffic and transit alternatives and a low income toll discount program similar to other MTC sponsored equity initiatives are in place. What do you think about the proposed near term project and the use of tolls to improve mobility and begin environmental restoration as soon as possible? We look forward to hearing from you as we discuss the past, the present, and especially the future of Highway 37. Thank you. I think we're running into a power group now that I'll introduce. So I, I do want to start out by really emphasizing the fact that this is a partnership. This is a partnership with the state of California and the Caltrans Metropolitan Transportation Commission, as well as the four counties that are touching the state right 
addition, the video made reference to the representation of the partnership that we're all developing with resource agencies and a lot of the environmental groups that are invested in the restoration of the basins, which really is a major side of this important facility. Next slide. So a little bit about the Bay Area Infrastructure Financing Authority. That is a joint powers authority made up of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and the Bay Area Coal Authority. It's managed by the same commissioners that oversee the work of both of those agencies and is well versed in the work associated with toll. So the Bay Area Infrastructure Financing Authority operates the Bay Area Express Lanes through the Bay Area Toll Authority Fast Track Customer Service Center. Can I ask you to speak just a little bit louder into the mic, please? Sure. Thank you. So the Bay Area Infrastructure Financing Authority is a joint powers authority made up of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and the Bay Area Toll Authority. It's administered by the exact same commission staff as the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. It currently operates through the Bay Area Toll Authority's fast track system all of the express lanes that are operated under MTC's purview. It's also used to finance other investments in the region and is uh, an organization that has been in place for many years now. Next slide. So the question here is why tolling? First of all, tolling does help finance the infrastructure investments that we're making today. Uh, it will be used as a local match to match with state and federal grants that we need to complete this particular important project. And it will also provide revenue to keep it open and operating uh, during its term. It also will help us deliver on a lot of the ecological enhancements that we're required to do and want to do in this corridor. The important point to mention, as was mentioned in the presentation of the video, is that tolling would not begin until the improvements adding capacity and transit investments are ready to roll. It will also have a low income component, uh, as was mentioned, similar to the work that we've done on transit with Clipper Start and are currently just beginning on our express lanes in the 880 corridor through the Oakland and uh, Santa Clara areas. Toll rates will be consistent with the other toll bridges in the region and uh, will be collected electronically. Next slide. It's important also just to remember that the primary investment is really around equity. And most of the folks that commute on this roadway are living in the Vallejo and Solano County area and working in the West Bay. They can't uh, generally afford the housing that's there until the housing balance is resolved, we really need to take and pay close attention to that improvement. It's also a very important uh, corridor for evacuations and emergencies and trying to keep it in the Richmond cell, San Rafael corridor open uh, during events like that are, are clearly important. What we see happening with these first improvements is that we'll reduce the travel time to the eastbound from what can be 100 minutes to 26 minutes. We also think in westbound, you'll improve the traffic delays from about 60 minutes to 30 minutes. We also think the investments pay off in terms of it, uh, economic benefits. So that we do see by saving those travel delays, we'll have considerable improvements in the economy. We also wanna mention that about half of the cost of the investment goes to improvements that are required regardless of whether or not we do a widening. So this project needs significant uh, improvements to keep it open and operational in its sediment uh, due to the fact that it uh, subsides in certain areas. Uh, and we will also be making the improvements to several of the bridge uh, structures that impede the way the water flows. And then as I mentioned, we'll be adding public uh, access to some of the existing Bay Trail work that we're gonna complete uh, as well as the highway improvements. So to sum it up, we just think this is a critical corridor for many reasons, and we're really excited about the opportunity to get this project uh, moving. With that, I'd like to turn the mic over to Dean Altwanze, the executive of the 
Caltrans director in District 4. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I want to talk in the next few slides about why uh, State Route 37 is a very important thing. So I want to start with this slide here that shows the day of uh, the reality of State Route 37. Uh, it's one of the most critical thing, uh, links between East and West. Uh, it serves between the US 101 and Interstate 80. And when we talk about State Route 37, we usually say nothing in three segments. We describe the Western segment, which is between US 101 and State Route 121 as segment A, and then the middle segment between 121 and Mare Island as segment B, and then the third segment to the east, which is between Mare Island and US, uh, excuse me, Interstate 80 as segment C. Uh, this is a very critical route, as mentioned by uh, Mr. Fermier, that you know it provides that link between the housing markets in Solano and the uh, job market in the and smaller counties. Um, it's also an important uh, route in the sense that it doesn't have a whole lot of alternatives in terms of the detours. If you look at the map on the very top of the presentation there on the slide, you see that the two alternatives to the north, you get a go through Highway 116 and, one, uh, and Highway 12. And then to the south, that would be through Interstate 580, which is significantly longer. We're talking about almost doubling um, the, uh, the uh, length of the, the segment. Um, also, you know, if you look at segment A, uh, which is between US 101 and 121, then this is a four lane highway, giving us two lanes in each direction. Segment B between 121 and Bear Island is a two lane highway, which is one lane in each direction. And then segment C between Bear Island and uh, Interstate 80 is also four lanes. So you can clearly see that there is a lot of uh, choke point in that uh, nine and a half mile segment in the second three. Next slide. Route 37 has many challenges. Um, we talked a little bit about the congestion challenge and the fact that we have to uh, combine the peak hours uh, about north of 100 minutes a day. Uh, it's something that a lot of uh, motors suffer through every day commuting in this travel. But it also has a couple of other big challenges that we have to grapple with. One is the flooding, which has been reoccurring. Back in 2017, we had to shut down the highway for 28 days because of flooding. And we had to repeat that again in 2019. And most recently uh, this year, earlier this year. The flooding has been a reoccurring issue that we need to deal with. And we've spent a lot of um, money to try to do some temporary fixes, but we have to look at the long term what we need to do. In addition to flooding, there's also the sea level rise issue. Uh, this route is expected to be underwater by 2050. And we need to figure out solutions and how we are going to address that sea level rise and how we're going to be able to pick up this show uh, to an adequate elevation uh, for the impacts of the sea level rise. Next slide, please. But also, you know, another thing that we need to look at is. Um, what are we going to do with, in the long term in order for us to be able to achieve that? And the ultimate resiliency project, also known as the L corridor sea level rise and adoption, is what's described here in terms of the benefits that would be produced out of that. This project is going to be extending from US 101 all the way to Interstate 80. And it will provide many benefits, including addressing sea level rise, ecological restoration, and conservation. A multimodal car corridor, so definitely we have bike and pedestrian components to it, and also access to big ends and equity. Um, next slide, please. So, what do we do in the meanwhile? There's a couple of very important projects that are ongoing. Today, we're here to talk about one of them, which is improvements from Sears, from Sears Point to uh, Bear Island which addresses a number of benefits and provides those short-term or advanced uh, benefits in the meanwhile while we're still working on the Resilient 37 uh, ultimate project. In addition to the project that we're here to discuss today, there's also the sea level um, flood, um, uh, sea level, the flood reduction project, excuse me. Um, the flood reduction project is looking at what we can do in the interim to um, address the flooding that's reoccurring all the time in segment A on State Route 37. Um, so while we're working on these two projects in the interim, we're also working on the Resilient 37 
ultimate project. And recently, Caltrans in uh, December of last year has completed the Cal study, which stands for planning and environmental linkage. And what it does is identifies how we're going to address sea level rise on the entire state route 37. And it has, it has basically put together an implementation plan recommending the phasing strategy, which divides the ultimate project into a number of smaller projects so that we can implement it into the each one of them. Uh, I would like next to introduce some genetic advisement. We'll be talking about some more details of the project. Thank you, Director. Jeanette Weisman, um, MTC State Route 37 Program Manager. So I'm going to talk to you uh, more about the project itself and proposed tolling. Um, so the HOV lanes and the removal of the lane drop um, in this innovative fashion is really the heart of this project. The schematic you see at the center of this, of this slide showcases how we plan on delivering that with an HOV lane in each direction and alongside general purpose lanes. We also um, are, will be including the bus transit um, that was earlier discussed to provide alternatives to um, your vehicles getting across the corridor where currently none exists. Um, we also will be providing um, enhancements to recreation in the corridor and then making really important safety improvements um, to address um, collisions, reducing the chance of secondary collisions through intelligent transportation systems, ITS, such as changeable message signs that will alert you if there's severe delays and if there's a crash ahead. Um, we also have resilience as a cornerstone of even this interim near-term project. And that will be in the form of ecological restoration and early enhancements. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. And tolling is really the critical step to making all of this happen, to fund the project, and to do so in a way that is um, you know, conforming with our state sustainability policy and requirements by managing traffic demand and reducing vehicle miles traveled, BMT. Next slide. Okay, thank you. Um, so this slide shows um, who's using the corridor, where are they going, and what are we talking about when we're talking about the toll gantry. So the background maps are from um, NBTA's 2018 study. The green indicates where travelers are starting, and the orange is their destination, with the darker colors indicating a greater concentration of travelers. <laughs> and you can see here that there are, as we've already discussed, and you probably already know, you know, substantial travel, the travelers are beginning in the east, um, when they're go, uh, in the Vallejo, Fairfield, and American Canyon area, and heading to the west to places like San Rafael, Nevada, um, and Petaluma. Um, and the slide to the right is just showing that eastbound reverse movement. Uh, so the toll gantries will be electronic toll collecting systems. Um, we have uh, one to two that are being considered. Uh, the uh, picture to the left shows the location that's considered by Mare Island, just west of Mare Island. And the other image identifies the other location potentially uh, by State Route 121. We are considering potentially having uh, bi-directional uh, tolling, in which case it would be tolled at 50% in each direction. Next slide. So this slide um, shows our project timeline. The steps in gray are the phases that we've already completed. Uh, so we have uh, just recently completed our CEQA and NEPA um, analysis wrapped up in February. Um, we are now beginning the final design and permitting step of the project and are working towards beginning construction in 2025 with the goal of um, opening the project and the improvements to the public in 2027. Next slide. 
This is our funding plan. So we have approximately 80 million uh, funds already um, in hand that consists largely of regional and state funds. We're looking for tolling financing from tolls to make up another approximately 100 million to help pay for the project and leverage future grant funding that we are pursuing. Next slide. So now I want to reemphasize the project benefits and why we think this is so important um, to carry forward. Next slide. Uh, the project is grounded and based around equity. So we have heard um, long and hard about the problems that are facing commuters who are going in large part to job opportunities to the West from areas of more affordable um, home ownership in the eastern portion of the corridor um, in Solano County and recognizing that their experience um, and being very significant, uh, the congestion that they're experiencing, um, getting stuck in traffic as part of those commutes. So this project is really oriented around those disadvantaged communities and equity prior communities and trying to improve quality of life of the state Route 37 travelers. Next slide. So how are we gonna do that? We are delivering uh, more equitable transportation, first and foremost through the reduced travel times, reliable travel along the corridor, through this congestion relief that the additional lane um, will provide. We'll also be offering a bus transit where none currently exists, and that will provide an alternative route to using your own vehicle. We'll also be providing discounts uh, for those uh, low qualifying, low income users. Um, that need to use the general purpose lane. And just as a reminder, the HOV lane will be free. We'll also be improving recreational access to areas along this portion of State Route 37. Next slide. Um, so a little bit more about the equity program. Um, as mentioned earlier, we'll be looking to have consistency across the Bay Area and utilizing existing discount programs such as IPD's START program, where there is a 50% discount to qualifying low income individuals. How do you qualify? It'll be similar to Coco Start. If you have to qualify for CalFresh, Medi Cal, you will qualify for this. We will also be working to engage with the community. Uh, the North Bay community-based organizations um, and the general users um, of State Route 37 through traditional and social media in the languages that work for you. And next slide. And I just want to emphasize what that means in terms of travel time savings. Andy already spoke to this, but we really recognize and we've heard from people time and time again that their time is valuable, that um, time matters, and we see this as a way of bringing back time for you to do the things that matter to you and not be stuck in traffic on State Route 37. So we can reduce the afternoon commute by over 50% and uh, the morning commute by approximately 50%. And we think this means at least 85 million in that first year of travel benefits. We also recognize by we that we can improve the travel savings while still addressing our state sustainability and being climate responsible by reducing BMT. Next slide. So here's a little bit more detail about the transit that we are proposing along the corridor. So uh, STA, Solano Transportation Authority, and SolTrans are taking a lead on this development. And so this is a draft implementation plan and draft information. But the image shows that we're looking to start uh, the bus transit at Vallejo, connecting the community of Vallejo, 
west to the Vado and San Rafael, and that we will be um, connecting it to mobility hubs where you can connect to other transit. We recognize the importance of park and ride lots where you can also access it and then hop on transit. And then making sure that you have viable first and last mile options with affordable access to your final destination. Uh, lastly, we're working with Compute 37, a rideshare platform, which helps put potential carpoolers together to get them into this HOV lane, to getting them through for free and faster. Next slide. So here's an example of uh, potential operations. So this is showcasing weekday operations, looking at potentially uh, bus transit starting at 5, going to 9 p.m. with uh, peak travel or transit operations every 30 minutes and off peak every hour. Next slide. Uh, we also want to talk a little bit more in detail about the recreational access that we've heard from the community is meaningful to you. Um, the Sears Point Trail Connector um, is a strategic trail improvement which would connect up to eight miles of bike and pedestrian trails um, and would get more ridership and pedestrians to use this beautiful portion of um, along State Route 37. Next slide. And then we've also heard from the city of Vallejo and the broader um, STA um, community about other projects recreational enhancements that matter to you. Um, there was a study in 2020, 2019 and 2021, excuse me, that identified the priority recreational improvements and shown here um, on this map includes Guadalcanal Village Observation and also recognize the importance of Mare Island Education Center to reach the students in Vallejo and give them improved access to recreation and uh, bay information. Next slide. And then to resilience, because even though this is a near-term project, there is an opportunity to bring in base adaptation even now. And so we're looking to do that as part of a nature-based solution, which you see as Strip Marsh East. This is an important marsh habitat just south of Highway 37 near Cullinan Ranch, just west of Mare Island. So this is a um, marsh habitat that's um, quickly degrading. Now it's important to um, an array of special status species. And then it also provides a buffer to State Route 37 from storm surge um, and high tides. So it's a win-win by improving that, we also protect 37. And then uh, another really important resilience project that will also provide ecological and transportation benefits is addressing another roadblock. It's an ecological roadblock that is a result of having the very narrow channel, um, Tolley Creek by um, the Tolley Creek Bridge. Currently, that opening is only about 40 feet for Tolley Creek. And um, limited, it's constrained by the bridge, which is only 60 feet. By replacing that bridge, we can open up that channel and we can remove this roadblock to, ecolo to ecological restoration um, that is critical to moving forward the Sonoma Creek Salem strategy projects, which are otherwise waiting on our long term resiliency work. So, that is um, the resilience. Next slide. And I just want to wrap up um, the benefits by pointing out we've been coming to the community, to the public, uh, over the course of many years now, starting back to 2015 as part of our public policy committee meetings. We've been meeting with the elected officials of the North Bay counties, um, reaching out as part of our collaboration of transportation agencies. Um, we had focused uh, conversations that included open houses and surveys. 
um, discussion of topics, including tolling, um, hearing the public's feedback, integrating that input into our project development. And then more recently, in the last several years, um, we've held, uh, conducted our CEQA NEPA process um, and uh, met with the public as part of scoping and draft environment um, document conversations. So we've heard you, we look forward to talking more with you, and we've uh, attempted to integrate the input you've given us to date. Next slide. I'm almost done. I just want to call out a couple of the um, ways in which this project is, in fact, consistent with AB 194. So next slide. So this project will improve the corridor's perform performance, as you've heard us say several times, it will reduce delays. We are going to be, we have a fiscally constrained and reasonable um, toll revenue um, plan, and we are working cooperatively amongst our agencies. In 2016, we developed our project initiation document. Now we move on to the plan specification and estimate phase of the Caltrans delivery process, wherein we'll be developing our concept of operations. Next slide. And as Andy introduced, um, the Bay Area Infrastructure Financing Authority is the toll applicant. AFA will be the toll authority approving toll rates um, and delivering, operating, and maintaining the toll system. AFA has experience with express lanes in Alameda, Contra Costa, Solano, and financing regional transportation. Next slide. Lastly, um, in addition to these times where we reach out to you, we will always be available. Um, to you to reach out to us and to visit to find out more about our project and our program. Uh, the Resilient 37 and Caltrans program site shown here has information that we update regularly. Uh, we also continue to hold policy and FAPA committee meetings that are open to the public. So with that, with that. Right, thank you to all of our presenters. I like, I like to now open it up to the, the hearing to public comment. The instructions for how to comment are on the slide that you see. For those attending in person, you will, uh, if you would like to comment, please fill out a comment card located at the back of the room with your name. Once your name is called, please come to the microphone to make your comment. For those of you attending virtually on Zoom, please use the raise hand icon to indicate that you wish to comment. Or if you are dialing in by phone, press uh, star nine to raise your hand. We'll call you by name or the last few digits of your phone number. When it's your turn to provide your comment, press star six to unmute once called. We'll be limiting comments to one minute. We hope to receive comments from all in attendance today. However, I, I do want to note that the library closes at 8 p.m. We also continue to accept public comment after today. If you can email comments to us at the email address on the screen, which is ctc at catc.ca.gov. You can also find our email address and our fiscal mailing address on our website, catc.ca.gov. Please be advised that improper comments and disorderly conduct are not permitted in this hearing. We will start the public comment with our in-person attendees. And the first name up is Joseph Mickelson, which will be followed by Dave Bellet. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Mickelson. I'm an engineer, I'm one of the people that created the City of American Canyon. You know a lot about the business that you're doing. And you, everybody on this board has not told me anything I want to hear. They have no facts. You ought to be ashamed of yourself where this condition is today. It's terrible. Uh, you're talking about uh, six lanes, four lanes. You don't know whether you use belt footage, what type of road you're going to build. You don't know nothing. 
you haven't told me as an engineer what you're going to do. And I take this as a personal insult. And I'm going to go talk on the floor of the state legislature and talk to our mayor, governor and all the people in the state legislature on the floor. I the permission from the, the uh, charter arm to talk. I've done a lot of bills, canceled a lot of bills, and thank you, sir. Yeah, well, I don't like this one minute stuff, Mr. Yeah. It's not fair. Good afternoon, uh, commissioners. Thank you for allowing us to speak. My name is Dave Mellick. I'm a local resident, and I'm representing myself and myself only, no other board or commission. Um, I like a lot about a lot of what we're seeing here. What I don't like is the idea of a toll, period. I think we really need to find another way. You won't find other toll roads per se, other than the carpool lanes and bridges, but uh, I'd rather not see a toll road at all. Uh, and then of course, uh, I'd like to see the interim project not happen unless we have a hundred percent guarantee that any work done on that will not be undone when we come to the final project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is Ed Kelly. Ed Kelly, followed by Suzanne Glazer. Hello, everybody. My name is Ed Kelly. I'm a local resident. I'm a local resident. Is on. Close that. Yes. yes. Oh, oh okay. Okay. sorry about that. Um, I work at uh, Sonoma Raceway, and that's very set of really impacts the participation out there. There's 100,000 people who are out there, and sometimes they can't get out there because Highway 37 is just not available. So we need to maybe pick up the pace on this, work a little harder, maybe get it sooner. That's what I said. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Susan Glover, followed by Dina Strickland. Hello, my name is Susan Glover. Uh, I am my life partner, uh, purchased a property uh, five miles west of Mare Island, right in what you call the Strip Marsh area. That is a over 104 year old homestead that was established as part of the Homestead Act. Uh, the easement used to go to Bay, the original uh, Highway 37 going through cut off the access to the Bay. Uh, we purchased in 2003, and we are young, we are creative. My partner is a master woodworker. We purchased the property when he moved his shop from Sonoma to Mare Island. I work in the wine industry in Napa. Both of us do the turnaround at Skaggs Island every day, and I would like to know, first of all, how what is your dispensation for private landowners that live on Highway 37? I also would very much, I, I have been coming to these meetings since they began, and I have asked to be included in the process and to have our rights respected. And it has been very difficult. There is absolutely nothing in your plan to preserve our rights and our access. Thank you. Next up is Dana Strayland. Hi, my name is Dana Strayland. I'm a resident of Vallejo. And I just wanted to thank you for all your work on this project. Um, I'm a little concerned about what the impact adding another toll road would have on Vallejo residents. Vallejo, uh, as of now, any residents can move out of Vallejo to higher paying jobs and positions in Napa, Sonoma, and their country. Uh, if we follow the toll model of seven dollars per crossing, it would add an annual cost of seventeen hundred eighty-five dollars per driver. This is roughly one month's rent and a significant burden to families in Vallejo. My other concern, and I have to take this into account, is that a larger road makes more noise. Um, has there been a study of how this noise will impact wildlife and residents who live near the bridge? Um, and my last point is, have we considered moving the toll closer to Sears Point so that we can capture more of the revenue 
to really bring this project to fruition and make it the best we can. I'm hoping that uh, everybody on the commission takes these points into consideration and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Next up is Paula Connell Connolly, followed by Joe Feller. Hello, I used to come up to the community to seven, four years ago when it was investment. And legislators have kicked this can down the road for decades until it is now this huge expense that was put on the taxpayers' backs. The magic polling plan is completely out of touch. You point out lower income commuters coming from small counties, so the poll is an answer for that, I suppose. I don't see a commuter discount only for very low income, which would help someone like me who makes enough but not quite that much. And why is there no toll in the Sonoma County area that has way more income than Solano? That is absolutely ridiculous. Again, so first, my husband and I, we spent almost $4,000 a year crossing the Venetia Bridge to work every day, just to go to work. It will not ease traffic. I'm on 680, it takes me longer to get to work because of the express lanes, because I get behind people going 65 and you can't get around them. The peak express tolls for 10 miles from Dublin to Alamo is 925. Is that what we're looking at down the road on Highway 37, just to get across? This will be kind of, okay, well, it will create undue hardship on the people who commute. High gas prices, the gas tax, car registration. It's the responsibility of government, federal, local, state, to provide for our roads, not put it on the backs of the commuters who are already paying a lot to Thank keep you. our roads Thank safer. You. Thank you. Followed by Thomas Barber Rio. First, Nevada has no low income effort currently on any bridge under their purview. So I don't believe them about any other low income uh, process that they're going to come up with. Uh, this uh, toll will uh, unduly impact the lowest income Solano residents while leaving alternate routes to Sacramento and various resorts from the Western counties untold. We're gonna have a huge traffic jam on 121 now every day. I, it's just, this plan is so bad. This, this lady here has trotted out a Mare Island plan that has been thrown out for 40 years, for 40 years. I mean, I just can't believe how you guys resurrect this crap. And so anyway, finally, I have to say you tax the poor and working people with no financial impacts on either wealthy employers or the communities that have refused to build uh, adequate, affordable housing. Thank you. 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 Twice in Commissioner Wiseman's presentation, equity. The improvements for widening Highway 37 on the Marin and Sonoma side, they were done without any tolls, not a penny. No one asked Marin or Sonoma to pay tolls for their improvements on their side of the road. Never. Raising Marin and Sonoma portion, that's going to be funded through the Solano tolls. Tolls were only on the Solano side. But we're paying for the Marin work. Only the Solano side has told the poor side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. 40% of the low income commuters, per your video, 28% are of color, per your video. Low income, we're paying. The wetlands restoration, oh, hell no. You take that from other funds. That's not coming from my hole. Time's up. Thank you very much. Above all, tags up, tags up. This is the opposite of equity. Jane Bernard is the overwhelming next. majority on the poor side, on the blind side. Mm -hmm. It is not opposite of equity. Jane Bernard is up next. Go away. Brief history of how these guys roll. Four state bridges run east and west. Regional measure three raises the toll to eight bucks to subsidize a train that goes north, south, Santa Fe to Santa Rosa, BART extensions to San Jose, BART cars, they keep screwing the people that go east and west to subsidize north and south. Now, how many people in this room know that they lost $105 million of your toll money? You guys aware of that? 
$105 million gambling on derivatives. There's another $180 million in uncollected tolls and uh, fines. What are these guys doing to collect it? What are they doing? I'm going to try and get you guys to pay more money again. These guys are a joke at the toll authority. They are completely ineffectual. All they want to do is keep screwing a working man. The tolls are going up in 2025 to eight bucks. You're going to have to earn 25 bucks a day to cross both bridges if you got to go to San Francisco. You're paying that after tax dollars. It's your money. That's Good evening. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, my name is Ann Carr. I'm a resident of Vallejo, California. Uh, born and raised here, have lived in the South Bay as well. Um, one minute is completely inadequate for getting community engagement, which I thought I saw in the slides as the important part of what you guys call, quote, equity. Um, it, this project, we obviously need better roads going from the Solano County to Marin and Sonoma. However, what we get out of this for most travelers and commuters is one lane that's going to be more expensive. Secondly, if, by a, if you impose a toll on this road, you basically lock, landlock Vallejo because to get out of Vallejo, we will then have three of the four major ways out of town have to be toll roads. So it's an undue burden in terms of Leo relative to really the entire Bay Area. So this project really needs to be reworked with respect to the toll. With respect to the engineering, it does not make sense to build a road that could be underwater. You need, if you're going to invest in something, do an elevated road because uh, an underwater road is going to be flooded. And like I say, one minute is completely inadequate. And we put it up with, we put it up with so much uh, disrespect for the public in the city of Vallejo. We have horrible schools. We have absentee landlords. We cater to them rather than to the residents of the city of Vallejo. And we penalize the people of Vallejo with a toll in any hardly, hardly all directions. This isn't a prison. This is a community. And meanwhile, there's flooding on 101 during this last winter. Are we planning on taxing or tolling 101 portions because of flooding? No, I don't think so. And there's going to be a lot of other things that are going to be underwater. And you need to start respecting people. And a minute to let people speak is ridiculous. And in terms of outreach, you need to re out, do a better outreach. I participated in these dinos. My minutes up. I'm not free. Not quite yet. No, no. Speak for a little bit. You can listen to these people. You guys can do like, you know, like, 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 Followed by Michael Hayes. Thank you, Steve Erdogan, the Transportation and Land Use Coalition. We agree that uh, tolls ought to be heavy for users up and down the entire route uh, rather than simply focused on the safety of the layout and uh, your point. Uh, we think also that. A significant portion of the toll ought to be devoted to getting public transit going, similar to the way that the tolls on the Golden Gate Bridge are currently canceled. Lastly, I think the funding, the focus really needs to be on the fact that we're going to need to reduce driving by about 25% over the next uh, 25 years. And so we really ought to focus our building on assisting. Getting a shift in the use of single occupancy vehicles 
Sure. Thank you. Our first comment will be from Cynthia Murray. Give us a moment here. Cynthia? Good evening. Cynthia Murray. I am the CEO of North Bay Leadership Council. And uh, we are represent the leading employers in Marin, Sonoma and Napa counties and are very supportive of having uh, Highway 37 become a toll road. We feel that it, as it becomes a bridge, it, it should be treated like other bridges. And we really want to make sure that we have a functioning highway before it goes underwater. And these improvements are critical to making sure that the road can be raised and widened to meet the needs of the North Bay. And these are needs of commuters. They are the needs of our public safety people. They're the needs of our goods movement and their need for recreation. And I appreciate that you're trying to build in equity. I think that's a great way to move forward, but it's absolutely essential that we have this and we need to pay for the improvements. And we, as the employers representing over 25,000 employees, really want this to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Just one moment, please. Okay, our next comment will be from Paul Thies, Solano Sierra Club. First, I need to know whether my uh, comments can be heard. The sound quality on this end is very poor. Yes. Can they be heard by the group in the room? Yes, you can be heard. Thank you. Uh, okay. Then oh. uh, let, let me begin by pointing out an inconsistency uh, between the word equity and the intention to collect tolls only on the Vallejo side, on the Solano County side. Mrs. Altawansi said, referred to the project as extending all the way to Highway 101, and it should be considered and told as such. Uh, there's also a question in my mind about uh, whether this is going to be a 50% discount for low income, or whether this is going to be, as Mr. Fermier said, consistent with other uh, tolls that are that are uh, collected across the Bay Area, are they also going to offer a 50% discount? Uh, lastly, I want to say that dumping more dirt on the highway now 
is not going to bring us a better result necessarily. Uh, we ought to put the money into a raised uh, structure immediately, um, a causeway all the way across. Thank you for listening you. to my concerns. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay, and our next comment will be from Joshua Lissett. Go ahead, please. Um, according to Wikipedia, the whole of SR 37 has been proposed to be built to freeway standards since the early 1950s. However, the proposals have been met with many economic and environmental obstacles, making the task all but impossible for much of the route. We've heard a lot of economic obstacles in tonight's feedback. If we continue the same feedback, we'll never see improvements enacted. That being said, I sincerely hope that any tolls enacted take into account the undue tax put on those who travel the road on a regular basis. What I'm most interested in hearing, and I think the people in this meeting would be most interested in hearing at future meetings, are what is this panel doing to apply for some of the $65 billion that were offered for infrastructure uh, with the bipartisan infrastructure deal on a federal basis, on a federal level uh, recently. What are we doing to apply for those funds? And what are the progress toward application for those funds to fund this project? Thank you very much. Our next comment will be from Roland. Thank you. Um, I've got a very quick, I have a very quick question to the chair, uh, which is whether any consideration has been given, hearing feedback, I don't know where it's from, whether any consideration has been given to private financing for this project in return for an operating concession. And the reason I'm asking it's because this approach often results in a superior solution delivered faster at the lower cost. Thank you. Thank you. Our next comment will be from Joe Green Heffern. Yes, this is Joe Green Heffern. I'm a civil engineer and I uh, commute from Fairfield periodically. Um, I'm supportive of the, the need for tolls um, to fund neglected infrastructure over the past few decades uh, to get a sustainable facility. I do think it needs to toll the entire route. And I think the importance in, re in reducing congestion is the getting a mode shift onto HOV, you know, uh, carpools and buses and so the idea of uh, toll free for that is, is good. I would suggest that um, you report travel times maybe at the gantry um, separately for the um, single occupancy vehicle lanes and the um, multi high occupancy vehicles so that people understand the benefit of carpooling and buses. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next comment is from Stevie. Hi, my name is Stevie. I am a resident of Vallejo. I understand the importance of building a bridge um, across the 37. However, I am disappointed to hear that it is going to be told only on the Vallejo side and not at the Marin side. I feel like tolling at the Marin side will will capture anyone traveling from Napa, Sonoma, and, and getting that money from that. I also think that you guys should be working with other agencies to see other modes of public transportation. Is there a way to have the ferry go directly to San Rafael um, and that sort of thing? I think just, just tooling us is, is a little ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, our next comment is from Rachel Clark. Hi, um, my name is Rachel Clark. I work with Vintage Sotheby's International Realty, and I um, I sell property in Sonoma, Napa, Marin County, and Solano counties. I use Highway 37 very often, and I feel it would be unfair just to charge the Solano County area. I feel that it needs to be equal on both sides in Marin and um, Solano County. And actually, I think everybody, if we're going to do tolls, I think everybody should be paying their part. And I also am interested in the environmental impact report, if there is one. And, uh, people there that are speaking in person, if you could um, uh, turn up the volume, that would be fantastic. Sorry about my picture there with me and my father. But um, thank you so much for holding this forum. And I'd like to um, be in touch for future forums. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next comment is from Al. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Hello, so I'd like to thank the, everyone who showed up today and also putting uh, together this, um, this uh, uh, informational hearing. So why don't we have a, why doesn't, why doesn't the state or, or Vallejo issue some bonds instead of for investment instead of uh having the tolls like i don't understand like why does vallejo and why is vallejo the only one that's going to have to pay a toll like that's not really fair to everyone else if everyone is going to pay across the board that's more fair but even then why couldn't we issue some bonds instead of uh putting a, a toll and how much are these tolls are going to cost right like everyone's upset about the tolls but they haven't even told us how much the tolls are going to cost. And then, yeah. And then also, how come we don't have better, uh, like, public transportation? If we had better public transportation in Vallejo and uh, in the surrounding cities, like, for instance, my mother is disabled, right? So she is unable to get from Vallejo to, uh, what's it called, American Canyon or American Thank Canyon. You very, Fair, thank you very much, Al. Your time is up. Then, no, but it's the same thing, right? And then uh, you, you can't go to Vallejo to uh, thank Fairfield. Thank you, Al. We appreciate no, it. No, no. Thank you. Okay. Our next comment is from Jian. Yeah, I'm just curious on when, what's the um, toll going to be? What's the toll cost going to be? Hello? Yes. Thank you very much. Is that your comment? Yeah, what's the, how much the toll gonna be? I'll, if it could be reasonable, like uh, right now, because every toll is high right now. So, and that's it. That's the only question okay. I have. Thank you very much. Okay, that is our final raised hand from the webinar at this time. Oh, actually, sorry, we just, we have one more if you'd like to take that now. Um, okay, our next comment will be from Betty Ruth. Betty Ruth, if you'd like to go ahead. Yes, I'm disabled and I can't get around anywhere in Vallejo. With um, with the, with the situation. Okay. It's very difficult to move around. Okay. Thank you very much for your comment. Our last, uh, yes, it is. Thank you. So we're going to open up for commissioner comments now. So we're going to start with uh, Commissioner Russian. Uh, first off, uh, Jay Bradshaw, proud to serve on the commission. Uh, I'd like to share with the public um, 
what my day job is to executive director for the NorCal Partners Union, which has 37,000 uh, working men and women out there in the field. And I want to comment on a couple of things. I know we're going to get a report back, but I have some questions uh, about when uh, I think the uh, MPC is going to come back up to answer some of this stuff. But I will say, and I've raised it before, I'm the only one, the question of the burden uh, on working class folks. Uh, I will share with you a little personal side. Uh, from 2008 to 2021, my wife and I proudly called Vallejo home, and my wife is still a commuter uh, now from Oakland uh, to Nevada. But uh, the issue, when you look at it, no secret to anyone here, when we look at that commute in the morning, it's service folks, it's construction workers. That's I know you said a high percentage, I'd also like to know where NPC got its data from. How are you getting exactly those numbers on underserved, low income? But when you look at the burden. Minutes up. Yep. I think it's time. Equity. Yeah, I'm trying to respond to some commissioners and what I heard from today so I can help hopefully. I'm just making a point. I hear your point. Our words have value too. I don't disagree. Hence, so I was trying to wrap with you notes. No worries. Uh, if it comes to that. Um, did set the time limit. I like to hear from folks. Happy to talk to you further from that as well. But I'm highly concerned about the burden placed on Solano County, on working class folks in particular, they're going to carry the burden for this infrastructure. Also, some very important questions came up about what is the plan, where it's going to interact with private property, and how that works and how easements are going to work. So they get a lot of detail on the project on that. Also, another very important question that came up for the public tonight is if we look at this interim quote-unquote project, is it towards the longer-term project or will it be like starting all over again? Will it be complementary to that? And again, I want to strongly share my opinion that the burden cannot be carried by one of the last working-class towns in Northern California. Um, I don't believe workers and uh, folks who are struggling created the housing crisis, which is really driving the transportation crisis, which is really making child care for working people unaffordable. And so when we look at these projects and the social impacts, uh, it's broad ranging. And uh, these are questions that need to be answered. And I could go on and on, but I want to respect uh, the crew here. I may have some more follow-up questions after the report back, uh, but also uh, what is the level? I didn't quite catch it when we're talking about it comparative to other bridges. I will say my personal opinion on this. We look at gas taxes, they translate into a flat core tax. When we look at bridge poles also, they usually it's not taken into consideration. We definitely have to look at quote low income. What does that mean? We don't want to marginalize folks at all. When we talk about uplifting communities, uh, the commuters, because of the housing crisis, they're starting to tip over from the cost. Everything goes to the cost of housing, child care. So, I just want to raise those points. Um, and, uh, I'll wait for responses on that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And look, we do appreciate all the information that we're getting and, and certainly feel what the burden is. I, I did want to respond to maybe one or two of the questions. When we say similar to bridge tolls, what we're talking about is the seven or eight dollar toll for the both directions that we have in that. So it's, it's one trip is in that same range. And we do have an equity program that we've stood up on the express lanes on 880 about 50 percent. Um, discount for the low income and that's the type of program we anticipate that will be here. How about middle class and low income? But what is low
So they're going to show you how our heroes are going to be. Oh my God. They need it's a decision to make, so it's no process. You guys are already decided. It's already there for the final thing they show on the screen. This is just this lip service that we're taking what we're doing. Oh, yeah, at the end of everything. So, Cardinal um, Virus, one of the challenges we have here today for the English is we do not have a forum to take action. Um, we are here to listen. Um, we have heard, I have heard a lot. Um, some of the things we can do, we've heard a lot of things we've heard from, from Commissioner Bradshaw. We have additional commissioners on the line. I don't know if our commissioners on the line have additional information they would like to share um, about what they've heard. I can share what I've heard. Um, one of the things that happens next in the process is that we take all of this feedback. And we don't simply go back to the commission in May and say, well, we heard from the public and that was great, right? What we do is we go back, we summarize our information, we go back to MTC, we go back to Caltrans, we go back to each of the product sponsors, and we say, here's what we heard, and how are you going to respond? Okay, I have a question. Is it correct that's so on the site that this has already been approved through the state legislature and it's just waiting for the moment for the governor to sign? Is that true? Andy, can you speak to that? Yeah, no, that's not true. We have to wait for your authority to have a dialogue and proceed with this idea. So, so through the chair, for the clarity of the question, that um, because I think it's a tale of two cities in some way. And then if you're looking at economics and equity, uh, one thing I wanna to put to MTC, when you look at the level of income overall, I don't wanna to generalize too much, but on the quote west side, as opposed to the east side, how is that being taken into consideration? Again, it's not, I think things get carved up and put in their little boxes sometimes about who's uh, being underserved, what's low income, what's working class, middle class, if you like, um, you know, that needs to be taken into consideration. And what's the burden of it, you know, that's going to fall on folks? Because again, maybe I'm close to it because I've lived in Vallejo a long time, but you can see the crushing impact on it. So this should be a project that uplifts and those, right, who need to pay their fair share. It should be based on what you're carrying already at some level. There has to be some kind of way to, because I'm not, I don't understand how, the rates were set. Uh, are you talking about the uh, for low income folks on the toll lanes? I, I don't even know. Maybe I should. I apologize. How that is set, right? What is the data we use for that? How is that tracked? You know, that who qualifies for that? So these are things that are going to have to be answered for this commissioner to make an informed decision. Thanks. So, uh, Question is, there's a it's a who wait for you press call it. Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, so it's a long distance from 101 to Vallejo. And are we going to have some sort of smart metering program that someone that's going, say, to Sears Point or someone that's going to Sonoma from here is not paying a toll commensurate with the person that has to go all the way to San Rafael or uh, vice versa? In a reverse uh, situation. In other words, it should be told according to how much the use is. I have, if my dad is 103 years old, it's up in, up in Sonoma County and I'm going to visit him, I'm going to be going a short distance over to Sears Point and then going up into Sonoma. And that, that shouldn't be the same toll as someone going all the way. 101 and is any of that been factored in um and what has been the outreach to 
regular people. I know that I participated in the Zoom meetings and I've voiced our concerns for the people of Malay or their economic situation. They live here because of that economic situation and they are penalized going in almost every direction. So that has to be accounted. Thank you. Um, so uh, any additional comments? If we could do the uh, question cards and uh, do it for the question. Yeah, feel free to press the clarification. Thank you for the opportunity to respond to some of the other questions. Um, Jeanette Wiseman with NTC. Um, so I guess I'd like to start off with who, how do you qualify for the low income discount? We would be using uh, the existing standards, such as that I-80 start program and Clipper start. So what I mean by that, the current standard is 200% of the poverty level. So for a four person family, that would amount to, I believe, currently 60,000. So that's a you know, frame point. Um, and let's see, what other questions? Um, in terms of reaching out to residents who live on the corridor for uh, just compensation and consideration, giving their access, um, those details are issues that we need to work out as part of that uh, concept of operations to figure out the implications on people along State Route 37. So that's something that needs to be uh, determined and worked through. Um, in terms of access along uh, the western portion of the corridor and the um, full payment of tolling, I'd like to say that the big vision for tolling is um, to be tolling and collecting tolls from users on both sides. Currently, I just want to clarify, right now we have this partic particular project that we can work off of and I can't um, toll for um, outside of this project. And I think it is something that we need to continue to work into our program. So that is something we will continue to engage with the public. What is the public um, opportunities, next steps? Um, we will continue to meet with you and take um, comment. I know the CTC directly takes comment on this toll facility application but we also remain available um, above beyond that as part of our project and program in however ways that we proceed. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else that um, needed to be answered more immediately. Maybe I'll leave it there and uh, happy to answer questions afterwards. Great. Um, and if there's any additional uh, comments, um, I think we still have the comment. Uh, cars for names. Can I, can I just share yeah, this is something? Do, I, the you want me to go pull out another comment card? Please do. And we'll, we'll hear you. Um, but let's keep it working. All right, and Car, you're uh, up first. Thank you. And Car again, Vallejo. So, um, like I said at the beginning, one minute is completely inadequate for any kind of no meaningful community engagement. And I speak as someone who speaks at city council often within a three minute limit, which is itself compressed. There's some important um, issues that did not come out in my first comments. First of all, I believe I heard that um, about half of the improvements that are needed on 37 are needed anyway. So if that's the case, why are we looking at tolling? This should have come again underneath the regular maintenance of the, of the um, road. Another thing is I believe I heard someone say that by 2050, the road would be underwater. So again, we need to be looking at longer term kinds of investments, we don't want to be putting money in now that we then have to pay for again later. The um, transportation 
strategy of having the extra lane devoted to public transportation, HOV, and carpooling is completely, um, I believe, unrealistic given that you've got a source and a, a, a beginning and an end zone that are distributed broadly. So you do not have a concentration of, con of targets so that your first and last miles are convenient and, and workable. And finally, in looking at the pie chart you have for funding, it looks like you only have maybe 20% of the funding identified, which is inadequate for going forward with the project of this scope. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, Cody would like to address the comments you just heard. Give it a try. Uh, half of the investments are for things like transit, public access, um, and improvements like that. There is some of that investment that's associated with just maintaining the roadway, but that's coming from state sources. In addition, um, the improvements that we're making in this particular project at Tolley Creek are designed to buy us quite a bit of time relative to resilience and sea level rise. So the investments are important for the midterm time period. Ultimately, we're going to be back with some much more significant investments that do not have the fund stream identified yet and are going to actually address long term sea level rise concerns. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so next up, we have Susan Glazer. Glover. Glover, I apologize. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the, the, the comment that I wrote down on the card is what I've been saying all along, and I've raised it at multiple meetings, and that it seems to me that uh, knowing the way that the road is built and watching all of the ways that they've been trying to continuing uh, to, to continue to keep eking that road along why not just keep it as a frontage road instead of trying to turn it into a big road but it will never be a big road it was built with dirt it, you need to be building a causeway further out a big modern causeway such as we deserve in the state of california and leave the old road as a small frontage road for recreational and private landowner access. I mean, I, I just don't see what you guys are trying to do here. It's thinking my father was a structural and civil engineer, and I just, I, I, having, I, I just, a minute is ridiculous. I, I, I need to I, not I, I have any touch with someone. I keep trying to talk to you guys. I apologize. Thank you again. Uh, Savannah Nielsen, next. Savannah Nielsen. And after Savannah was uh, on my comments. Yeah. Hello. Uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, when you travel around, there's too many holes and it's quite expensive. Uh, it's a good idea to have two lanes going in one direction, two lanes in the other direction, turn 37, so it helps with traffic because it does take some time, like two hours to go from San Francisco to the lane mode. And, uh, and also, it's not nice to have the toll because sometimes there's not a lot of roads. On this uh, uh, 37 side, uh, the East Bay side where Oakland is a lot of roads, but on Marin side in, in the uh, area where 37 is not a lot of roads. So people just use it as a common road with short distance, like to drop someone off at school, to go to the grocery stores, and they just use it as a regular road and it's not starting to uh, tax that road. Because there's no other road you can really go down, but you're just living in a neighborhood and your neighborhood happens to be between Sonoma and the landowner in the areas. Thank you. Thanks so again. Uh, now we're going to go to our online um, comments. Next. Okay. Our next comment will be from Al. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, I wanted to address what I was asking before. I said that, um, so what are the plans for, uh, like, for people with disabilities, like your paratransit? How can they get from one point to another, especially going to Marin? You have you have um, Fairfield uh, paratransit, you have Napa paratransit, and you have Vallejo paratransit. They don't enter, and you even have American uh, American Canyon 
uh, that's run with um, by uh, what's it called by Napa. None of them talk to each other, so you can't get from one point to another. What what kind of things are they going to do for people that are disabled that need paratransit? Uh, I feel like we just need better um, public transportation, especially for your disabled uh, uh, patrons. And also, what about a syntax? Has there been any like proposal or, or looked at for bonds, like issuing a bond to pay for this instead of a toll? Like, that's my time. Thank you, and I appreciate everyone's um, time there. Thank you very much, Al. One moment, please. Okay, our next comment will be from Paul Thies, Solano Sierra Club. Dumping more dirt on the existing roadway does not, to raise it a foot or two, does not solve the existing problem of blockage of this vast wetland in uh, to the north, except at the extreme west and east ends of this project. In another five or 10 years, when sea level raises more, the cheapest thing to do will be simply to dump more dirt. Uh, that's why we need to uh, raise the road now using the best solution available, which is a raised causeway and allowing free passage of water uh, through to the marshlands, which protects against sea level rise itself. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay, that's our final comment for right now from the webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, we don't have any additional uh, comment cards at the moment. So I think that concludes our evening. Uh, thank you for your input. Uh, it's been heard, notes have been taken. We will incorporate these comments into decisions that are made in the future. And we appreciate and value your time tonight. Thanks so much.